Welcome back to the G.I. Joe review. In this review, we're going to be taking a look at the G.I. Joe Club exclusive Raptor 118 scale action figure. Raptor was released as part of the figure subscription service 5.0. This is the only figure that has been released of Raptor since 1987 in his like traditional 80s design and colors. Unfortunately, I don't have the packaging, but I will put a thumbnail picture up on the beginning of this video if you want to check that out. But I do have a file card. Here was the back of the, uh, or the front of the packaging when I cut it out. The file card looks pretty good. Cobra Falconer, codename Raptor, Cobra Signia. Nice artwork of the character. Here is the file card if you guys want to pause and read that. I'll hold this for a few seconds, give you an opportunity to pause it. Looks pretty good right there. Okay, so let's take a look at the figure. Raptor looks pretty good. Even though a lot of the figures from the club was kit bashed. Here's a very nice headdress of a falcon. It's done in all brown, some very nice scarf work around the back of there. It's pretty good. He has a big red eye, black pupil, beak coming down over the front of his face. He has his face painted on his eyes, a scowl on his face there. He does have a red necklace or a red whistle, I think it looks like to me. He has these light gray straps around his shoulders that becomes part of the harness on his back. He has the same color elbow pads on um, both of his arms. He does have brown gloves, a black belt, brown pants. Then we get down to his sore knee pads, a lighter brown for his boots. We have some light, light gray here as two pouches on his on his side of his um, shin. And then we have these very cool silver claw feet that actually worked out pretty good. Uh, these are part of the uh, Destro figure that came out. So they actually reused them on him and it actually it's a perfect fit for his character. I do like the feet very much. So it's going to take a 360 look at the figure. Cool. It's like you can stick something in there. So I guess two of those. So the two little right there, right there. Cool. For articulation, his head is on the ball joint. It will rotate 360 even with the necklace and the uh, headdress on. Looks perfectly. Gets a little bound up there, but you can bring it back pretty good. Arms on a ball joint, ever rotate 360. We do have bed and ball bows. And we also have a twist here at the elbow. So you can twist that. Let's see here. So our bend ratio is. I'm not going to get 90 degrees. Nope. And the only race to take which we have here is at the glove, right there. So I rotate 360. Do have chest articulation. A little bit of a uh, ab crunch there. We do have a swivel all the way around 360. He does sit very nicely, perfectly. Okay, so he does do the amazing split. Very cool. And he does a swizzle legs this much. It looks pretty good. And he has bendable knees. These are single jointed knees here because of the design. And they don't bend as much as you would think. So on his sitting purposes, he kind of has his feet out like that. 
his feet have a pivot down a tad bit and a rotation 360 and there's no up on the feet but it looks really good like I must say it's not a bad looking figure pretty cool nice representation of the 1987 version um, for the figure design at least um, but unfortunately he didn't come with his hard plastic wings instead of the cloth that we got in 1987 so you got basically a right and a left piece here then you got two of these which break up the body of the wings and then unfortunately you got this piece here um, this is a piece that connects all the uh, feathers I just showed you um, but unfortunately you don't get nothing for the top of this ball it stands out pretty bad this whole piece here was part of the jungle viper initially and it had a headpiece that came down out of his head um, but they failed to modify this if they would have cut that off it would have been decent but that's what we got there is a big hole pig here for a hole in his back so all we have to do now is just put this thing together so here's this balls and they move around very simple very easy if you guys have the jungle viper um you've probably seen this before i think it's any other figure these come with it's the jungle viper and now the raptor so it's going to sound like so. Um, since they're on a ball system, you can rotate them pretty good. Um, this is limitation stuff. So yeah, you can do this. Does his wings, and then you can take the figure, put it on his back like so. It does stay very nicely. His wings are adjustable if you want to bring them in like so. Like maybe for a perch pose. Then do fan out like so. You can go back. But it's kind of it's kind of weird if you those things are up. You can rotate them. And there's that ball piece on top that I was talking about. If they would just like maybe hacked it off and then it held a bit more hid behind his head, it'd have been okay. But it's like a kit bash from the jungle viper anyway, so it's better than uh probably some of the alternatives they had, but nothing beats the cloth in my opinion. He does come with a figure stand. Cobra insignia. Sculpted it in two peg holes for the figure. He comes with a revolver. So you just a black plastic. Just one of these. And he holds it really well. I was kind of thinking, you know, what kind of weapon would you want for a character like this? I mean, I'm sure the revolver is the best thing. But that's probably what these two little holes in his belts for to put his gun down. It's kind of tight, but they're there. If you do have this figure and maybe you haven't noticed them, or I'm not going to shove it down in there because if it's not going to receive it nicely, then I don't want to bend and cause a white distress of the plastic but you can do that if you want to on your figure um, these figures were kind of expensive from the club I mean, most of these figures went for um, the whole subscription you got like 12 figures and then you got like a bonus one like 13 if you ordered them um, 
they're you know, average on like you're in a three sixty four hundred bucks for these figures plus, plus the shipping and everything for all thirteen of them and uh they broke down almost like twenty five thirty dollars a figure. I know as you went through all the uh subscription services that you had, I think there was like eight of them. Don't quote me on that, but I know it's eight or nine. And uh before they closed the doors. So that's what I make these very sought after. One I just looked up before I did this video on um looking for like a picture of a card figure. One came up on eBay that sold for $250. I mean, that's pretty sick for a kit bash figure, you know. But I guess if you want it for your collection, I mean, these are rare. I mean, there's only so many made. Um, and it is pretty cool, but not perfect. But nothing's perfect. He also comes with this staff that has a perch on it for his falcon. It's just done in all brown. Here's this falcon. This is a pretty cool accessory. Very nice. We have the brown that matches his pants. They lay brown. We have brown spots on the bird's chest and under body. Black eyes, little orange beak. His feet matches yellow, yellow orange feet. And it does sit nicely on his perch. Let's see if we can get this day. Like so. The last accessory that came with was this little eye cover with a feather on it. This is for the falcon. It's just done all brown. The interior has a light brown, brown feather. And what that does, it sits on the birds. Oops. Thing is very small. And uh, there we go. He sits on a bird's head. Um, as you see, a lot of trainers use pretty much to keep the bird calm. But it's a pretty cool accessory. And this is a, it's not one solid color bird. I mean, some very nice detail to it. It's very cool. Let's see if we can get him to she hold that. It is kind of top heavy. I'm not sure how well he fits in his hand here. I think this is like something that was from Zartan from that G.I. Joe movie. If the Rise of Cobra, the first G.I. Joe movie. The Kip, Kip Ash is from that. But in this case, it works really well, in my opinion. I really don't have much problems with this figure except for this, the wings, these things on the back here. I think they could have done a lot better on that. Found something else that would worked. But it's not too bad. So he, he has this stand, has this file card, and then he has this black pistol. So that's what you got. And if you bought these today, if you bought the one off eBay, you'd pay two hundred fifty dollars, and that's what you get. It's pretty steep for that. Um, it's a nice figure though. Um, over. Like, I mean, if they were to cut that ball off the back, I had to be actually pretty cool with it. I would have loved to have a, you know, a soft goods for his wings or whatever gimmick he has. But it looks pretty good. Since we haven't had an, a raptor, an 80s looking raptor since 1987, I guess we want to take a, you know, what we get for a modern scale one. It is so hard to get these rarer characters in a, you know, in our in collector's hands because Hasbro just doesn't do it. You know, it's Cobra Commander, G.I. Joe, Scarlet, Snake Eye, Storm Shadow. You know, every time they release a new line, it's the same thing. You don't see people like Raptor, or Crystal Ball, Big Boa. You know, you just see the same thing over and over. Jojo has a large, um, universe of characters that they could just pour out like left and right but they don't do it I they figured kids only want Duke, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow and Cobra Commander that's not true so Hasbro stopped putting some of these guys on the shelf for people that have missed it and uh don't want to pay $250 for a figure 
So if you guys enjoyed this review and a look back on the, uh, well, I think it's one of the better releases from the G.I. Joe Collector's Club figure subscription service. Um, pretty cool. Beautiful Falcon, beautiful weapons. Uh, they, they use good parts. Good, I mean, <laughs> just some of the better um, arms, elbows, and, and the, the feet. And actually, the feet looks fantastic on this figure from the from the Destro as a kit bash. Um, and it's just as good. It's clean. It's small. It's not like a you know bulky. And the arms go straight down. Decent. The wings are the probably the my biggest gripe, so but it is what it is, I guess. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. Um thanks for watching. Happy collecting, keep collecting, and uh, we will see you in the next review.